So this is an iPad app uh, called iMotion. And there is a free version of this app, uh, but I'm using a $3 version uh, called iMotion for schools. There's also a pro version, same price, so I assume it's the same app. And uh, what, it, what it's used for is uh, cr creating videos um, by combining um, multiple individual images. And um, there's, I think, two purposes uh, for, for this kind of approach. And I'll uh, uh, kind of talk you through and explain an example of each. So if I... I don't want to do that now. <laughs> if, if I now, now start this, I'm not, I'm not actually uh, starting the uh, capture of images, but I'm, I'm moving into some options. And you'll see there, uh, kind of toward the top, there's a large start button. That's when you really are ready to uh, start cap capturing images. And to the right of that, you'll see back and front, depending, depending on which uh, iPad uh, camera you want to use. Uh, below that, you'll see uh, four buttons that kind of, in my opinion, allow for two options. Um, the first option goes along with the first button, and it's a uh, time lapse. So, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with time lapse videos, what they are normally used for is to um, speed up a very slow um, process of some kind. So uh, the, I, have an, I have a sample um, of uh, plants growing over a couple of week period of time, and that's, that's time lapse. Uh, of course, if you just take a video, you'd have two weeks of video with not much change that you would see very quickly. But with time lapse, what you're doing is taking a picture after designated lengths of time and then putting these individual photos together to create a, a sense of uh, motion. And you see below there a slider that allows you to set the interval of, of interest. And of course, you just slide it to whatever delay you want. Um, you can go as slow as one image a day. Um, for the uh, plant growth video I created, I took a picture um, every 30 minutes. So I would be taking um, basically four, four, 48 photos a day of the plant. Now, one way to kind of put this in perspective is when you're finished and, and all these individual uh, images are kind of put together, a kind of a, norm, a normal playback speed for video would be 16 frames a second. All right, so if you're taking 48 a day, you can see that you would compress whatever happened during an entire day, in this case, in terms of plant growth, into three seconds. And so then, you know, you can multiply three by uh, two or three weeks and you can see how long uh, your actual final product would be. But um, when, once you start, uh, obviously you're gonna want, um, you're gonna want your uh, um, iPad to be still and not moving between pictures. And so this takes some planning if you're going to set something up for a several week period of time. Uh, so that's time lapse photography. Um, and you've probably seen many time lapse images. Uh, and this just gives you for three bucks uh, the, the opportunity to do some fairly nice quality uh, um, versions of this, um, studying whatever process you want to, want, want to uh, track over time. Uh, manual, in contrast, means that instead of the photo being taken automatically after a given period of time, uh, it just basically will not take a photo until you click uh, a button. So um, 
well, that's manual, as it, as it suggests. Remote, um, basically, is the same thing, except uh, actually having to, you know, be at the uh, iPad and click a button on the screen. If you're, you know, it's always a little um, dangerous to do that because you're going to you know, create a little wiggle and that's going to cause a kind of minor, minor distortion in your picture. Remote allows you to do the same thing using... Uh, a second iOS device. So you can imagine having an iPhone um, connecting to iMotion on an iPad, and then every time you click um, the button on the phone, it takes a picture um, from, from the iPad. Now these uh, techniques are used um, to, again, create kind of a, a, a time-lapse uh, video, but but they're often used to um, cr create the impression of motion uh, that that you're going to create. So a good example of this um, would would be something like claymation. If you're familiar with claymation, so in claymation, what you do is you set up you set up a static camera, and you have. Uh, as the clay in claymation implies, um, a figure and whatever created out of clay, you take a picture and then you adjust the clay. Perhaps it's a, um, an animal you've made or a person or a person's face. You make a small change, you take another picture, et cetera, et cetera. So that kind of photography, claymation done with clay, uh, many People do um, kind of um, versions of this, maybe with uh, Legos, um, you know, something like that. So time lapse, designated time interval, put together to create a video, the manual and remote, um, the collection of the individual images um, under the control of the uh, photographer in this case, usually with the intent of um, capturing small changes uh, in, in whatever is being photographed and from that creating the impression of motion. All right, so let me show you a few more things here now. Um, so here I have uh, um, some actual options before I, 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 uh, I begin. Um, and I want to show you two options, both associated with um, the focus icon. That was the first icon, go back, first icon in the display. So um, the first version, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you see a slider here. And this is if you want to use manual uh, as opposed to um, um, the iPad's automatic focus. The, the, the reason to use manual focus, I have found, is that um, if you don't do that, your iPad will be continually trying to autofocus on whatever you have it uh, uh, positioned looking at. And... Uh, Variations in light, uh, whatever, <laughs> will cause the, the the iPad to continually work. So there may be some circumstances in which uh, you know you need to to, to um, autofocus um, because you're going to leave this on its own. You're not going to be there um, making sure things are in focus. But but in something like uh, watching a plant grow, the plant <laughs> is not going to change. A, a, a lot, and if you don't touch the iPad, it's going to remain wherever you manually focused. That's probably what you want uh, for for that kind of video creation. And so you can, as you see here, you can change the focus. And if you want to go to manual focus, you focus it, and then you're going to click the padlock there to to lock that in. Now. You can obviously throw it out of focus if the uh, object moves or if the um, or if the iPad moves, but let's assume 
you don't want that to happen. You don't want that, that to happen anyway. So you're going to try to control for that. And so manual focus um, um, would, would make the most sense. Now, you see kind of an image on the screen here. This is actually um, more suited to when you're doing claymation kinds of things. So when you, um, you can play with different kinds of focus by, I'm up here now in this grid, kind of looking at the options. And you see this person, that's just meant to be um, an example. It's called onion skin. And what that does once you actually have the thing in operation is that it's going to retain kind of a an onion onion skin little I don't know reminder of what the object looked like during the previous picture. So if you're trying to you know show some subtle motion by manipulating part of the object, you're, you're going to want to make sure that that's the only. Whatever you manipulated is the only thing that changed, and this kind of un onion skin, what it called an onion skin overlay, allows you to kind of keep everything aligned like you want it, with the exception of what the next picture uh, is, is is going to show. So that's what this is for. So um, a couple, you know, obviously multiple um, um, focus options, some related to. Uh, controlling autofocus, as would be the case in uh, um, st stop motion, and the other uh, being able to make sure you can align things accurately in um, uh, claymation kind of activities. So this is uh, eye motion. Um, by the way, once you click start, now you're going to start taking pictures. Uh, there's nothing really to see there. Uh, you start and then you stop when you're done. Um, and, and I've tried to give you kind of uh, an idea of the two applications that you might consider for classroom use and some of the things you might want to uh, uh, keep in mind um, uh, for each of those kinds of applications. So this is a good, good, applica um, good uh, and inexpensive tool uh, with a lot of uh, opportunities for creative use.